Hello and welcome, and today we are looking at the Japanese top flight, the J League. The J League's had some very high profile players in the past. Gary Lineker used to play there, Diego Forlan, Lucas Podolski, Fernando Torres recently also played there, and currently it's home to Thomas Vermaelen and Andres Iniesta. But despite these high profile players playing there, you might not know too much about the clubs, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. As I said earlier, the J League is the top flight of Japanese football, and it's the only one that is actually featured in FIFA. The J League goes all the way down to the J4 division, but like I said, these aren't on FIFA. The J4 division is mainly high school level, but will feature lots of young semi-professional players. One of the more interesting teams that are in Japan is actually Honda FC, who are not allowed to be promoted from the third division because they're fully owned by the car company Honda. To get any higher up the pyramid, they'd need to give up their ownership rights, but they were looking to do this even though they would be a J1 division team because the club was founded by the company to be an employee-run team. Anyway, that's irrelevant because they are in the third division, which isn't in FIFA. The J1 league features 18 teams from all around Japan. As always, we're going to start off with the squad rules and then go into the teams in detail and some transfers that you should probably make if you are playing in the Japanese leagues. So the squad rules in Japan are fairly simple. You're allowed 5 foreign players in a matchday squad, you can have unlimited in the squad but only 5 playing at a time, and players from Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar, Malaysia, Cambodia, Singapore, Indonesia and Qatar are all allowed and classified as Japanese according to the rules. Most teams like to fill out their rosters with Brazilians, Argentinians and more recently Spanish players with the likes of Vissel Kobe having Wellington, Thomas Vermaelen, Podolski, Iniesta, David Villa, Sergi Samper as their foreign players in the 2019 version of the J League. So that's the rules, unlimited players, unlimited foreign players in your team but you can only pick up to 5 in your matchday squads. So finding Japanese players might be a bit tricky, so that's what the Youth Academy is there for. I think you should scout Japan for sure, but I think you should also scout one of Brazil, Argentina, Spain, Australia, South Korea, China or Saudi Arabia. This will give your squad a fairly decent selection of nationalities that you'll find in actual Japanese J-League teams. Especially Brazil and Argentina, I'd make sure you focus on those. Because any player with more than 80 potential or overall will probably be the best player in the league, if you do get a bid from overseas, I think it would be fairly realistic if you did accept them. Players such as Sunshuk Nakamura or Ito or Minamoto have all played in Europe over the years and if you do get a bid, it's going to be hard to justify that they wouldn't want to leave Japan to play in the European top flight. Now one thing that the European top flights have that the J League doesn't have is realistic stadiums. There's only one team in the whole league that has a realistic stadium, Gamba Osaka who play at the Panasonic Stadium, who are also a brand who is founded in Osaka. Now, because all of the teams are fairly similar except for two, Vissel Kobe and Yokohama FC, it's going to be hard for me to put these teams into tiers like I normally will, so I'll try and just mention something interesting about a couple of the teams, and then from there you can judge them. So every team in the league is a fairly similar rating. You go from 64 overall to around 70 on average. Each team will have a couple of standout names who are usually the Brazilian foreign players but there is a couple of players in there that you might know of who are Japanese or you haven't heard of for a while. Now of course the standout player in the league is Andres Iniesta who plays for Vissel Kobe but alongside him you've got the centre back Thomas Vermaelen who used to play for Tottenham and Douglas Chagos Matios who is a Brazilian striker and they are the three best players in the league by rating. You can see Vissel Kirby have the best squad in the league and they also have the highest transfer budget. So if you want to try and supplement these players with some more all-round Japanese talent, you definitely have a way to do it pretty easily. You can either go gung-ho and get all the Youth Academy 5-star scouts, or you can try and sign back some of the Japanese players that have left Japan over the years. Also in the league, you've got Kawasaki Frontale, who have Leandro Damiao, who used to be one of the coolest Brazilers on FIFA 14. If you choose Gamba Osaka, you can use Gen Shoji in their real stadium, alongside Takashi Usami. But the most unique team in my opinion is Yokohama FC. Of course you've probably heard of Kazuyoshi Miura at this point, he's a 53 year old player who's got 59 overall, he's got not much pace but he's been around, he used to play for Santos in Brazil back in the 80s. If you pick Yokohama, you've also got Sunshuk Nakamura, the free kick god who used to play for Celtic, he's 42 years old but he's 65 overall so he'll still be able to keep up with most of the players in the J League. 
They've also got Yuta Minami, who's a 40-year-old goalkeeper. One of their foreign players' slots is taken up by Leandro Barbosa, who's a 36-year-old striker. But then they have another handful of players who are mid to low 30s. If you choose Yokohama, who are the worst team in the league by the way, there would be an absolute rebuilding job needed and very quickly. I think this would be the ultimate challenge for the J League. But of course the options there if you want to choose someone like Kawasaki Risol or Sanfis Hiroshima, who have all made it to the Asian Champions League in the past. So, realistic signings for a J League team. Of course, they're all going to abide by the same rules, you don't have someone like Bill Bao who can only sign that nation's players. So you're going to want to be focusing on Brazil mainly. Of course they don't have the licensed Brazil league in the game, but you can still take these players on even if they are fake. Another way to do this is to choose Youth Academy to find the Brazilian players, or sign older Brazilian players from the European leagues, there are several that would be willing to go to Japan. Also, don't be afraid to sign older players, as you can see the likes of Yokohama have made it to the J1 League, despite having an average age of about 55 years old. There are a few very good Japanese players who are over the age of 30, you've got Hiroki Sakai at Marseille, Takashi Inui at Aibar, they're both on the wrong side of 30 now, Yagatomo is also at Marseille, so he could be another one you can buy, Hasabe from Frankfurt is very good and getting on he's about 36 years old but then if you decide to sign younger players you've got Yunya Ito at Genk, Takafusi Kubo at Villarreal, Minamino at Liverpool, Nakajima at Porto and Kamada at Frankfurt with Hasabe. Either way you go the general rule is sign Japanese players, sign Brazilian players and sign Australians they're the main three nations that you'll find in the J League but you can also just to fight Argentinians, or New Zealanders, or Koreans, or Japanese players. Of course players like Oscar would be more than willing to switch from China to Japan if you offer them enough money. And of course one of the most famous players to play in Japan is Hulk, who of course also plays in China. So this could be the start of your journeyman career, you could be doing an Arsene Wenger and try and end up in Europe, I mean that would be a pretty good challenge actually. Of course he did start his managerial career at Nancy before going to Monaco, but then he did spend a year in Japan at Nagoya Grampus 8, who currently are in the J1 league, so if you're an Arsenal fan, why don't you try and emulate your hero, or villain, Arsene Wenger, and try and go from Nagoya Grampus to Arsenal and get that Champions League for them. So that's the end of this video, um, you could probably tell that it was a little bit less scripted than my other ones, but if you like the style more, let me know by giving me a like. And if you've made it this far and you want to see more videos like this, check out my channel. I've done several leagues already. I've got the Championship and the Bundesliga coming up soon. And a few more transfer guides for the Premier League to make. But yeah, if you like this, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!